uh, this fear, whether there is a disease or not. And fortunately, I, I think they're going to get something. Uh, they've been working on this for quite some time, and uh, they've been trying to do gain-of-function research. And we ought to all go back and take a look at why our government is doing this. When, that, when they continued, they were told to shut down and to stop doing this after all the accidents that are around 2013, 2014, they were reported so widely in the media. And uh, so Congress got involved in that. They said, all right, we want you guys to stop. They didn't stop. Yeah. Instead, what they did was they continued this at UNC Chapel Hill. They gave $3.7 million to the Wuhan uh, uh, research uh, to do this exact research, coronavirus and bats. And when the research was published from UNC Chapel Hill, you had a big outcry. People said, what's going on? I think it was 2015. This yeah. was supposed to have stopped a couple of years ago. And Francis Collins just said at the NIH, Fauci's boss said, no. We just decided that we'd continue doing this. They don't care what anybody says. They don't care what the Constitution says or the law or Congress or anybody. They're going to do whatever they want. Now, this has been a criminal organization for a very long time. Remember yeah. that Department of Health and Human Services and the National Institutes of Health and NIAID and CDC are criminal colluding parties. Yes. And I'm saying that yes. word, and that's a heavy word, right? I I'm not saying it lightly. Mm-hmm. The interesting way I define criminal is if there is a explicit law that you are explicitly violating. Yes. Right. For mm -hmm. me, right. that's a crime. Right. Now, I understand that the intent goes into the criminality and the nature of everything else. I understand those things. But at the end of the day, this is a criminal organization. Mm -hmm. And it is important to realize that in 2013 and 2014, the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill had a tiny little problem because they got an ethics committee together to examine whether or not it would be appropriate to create a synthetic mutant strain of the Wuhan Institute of Virology coronavirus. <laughs> I wish I was making this up, David. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I wish I was telling you something that was my imagination, a bad dream, and I'm going to wake from this bad dream and realize that, oh, I must have read that wrong. But I didn't, because in 2013, six miners who were working in a cave in China developed all of the symptoms that we now call COVID-19. That was in 2013. Mm. Okay. Mm. And Ralph Barrick's lab and the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill Investigation Review Board for their ethics committee got together and said, yes, we think it's ethical, even though NIH had said it's illegal. Yeah. We think it's ethical to take a Chinese pathogen and come up with synthetic mutations of a Chinese pathogen called the Wuhan Institute of Virology Coronavirus 1 <laughs> in 2016. You, you, yeah. cannot, you cannot look at that and say there is anything but criminal intent. Yes. Because the government representing the people of the United States has said that this is unethical. Yes. Right? We and have said we're have, not going to fund it. We have said with that kind of we, stuff. We yeah. have said that this is a line that we cannot cross. Mm -hmm. And what does Fauci do? He writes another check and is proud of the fact that through an alliance between National Institutes of Health, NIAID, and DARPA, we're not talking about $3.7 million laundered through EcoHealth Alliance. Mm -hmm. Because that was money laundering, by the way. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. When you actually provide capital to the party who's not the beneficiary of the capital. That's right. Money laundering, right? Wire fraud. How many things can we throw on this thing? They knew they were doing it. And not only did they do it, but they also got $1.7 billion a year mm. of our money our taxpayer dollars, $1.7 billion a year that was directed through NIAID to deal with bioterrorism and biohazard research. Now, the cool thing about that money is it goes into black holes all over the place. Mm -hmm. Vanderbilt, Emory, you know, right here, University of Texas system gets a lot of that money. There are tons of programs around the country that are getting this money. And the great thing about it is it goes through so many different affiliations that you can't follow it. Yeah. But the best part about that news is that if Attorney General Barr was awake right now, he would realize that they handed him the case of a lifetime, right? 
Fauci should have a federal indictment. He should be cuffed on That's camera. Right. He right. should be hauled off. And all this grandfather nonsense. Oh, he's 79. He looks like a grandfather. Grandfathers can't be wrong. You know what? Stalin looked like a grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. And Stalin impacted the lives of 40 million Russians. Guess what Fauci's done? Yes. He has actually destroyed the livelihoods of 60 million Americans. Yes. Destroyed right? the middle class. So, yeah. so, so when I get the emotional response of, oh, you can't beat up an old guy. Well, actually, I'm not beating up an old guy. I'm pointing out that a criminal... And once again, let's keep, be precise. What is the crime? The crime is by sitting on three boards and being the director of funds, he has violated the Clayton Act of the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, he may have a thousand reasons why he thinks it's justified, but it isn't. It's a violation of the law. That's right. And he should be cuffed. He should be tried. And I would add to everything else the fact that when you authorize a foreign pathogen to enter the United States after the U.S. government has said it is unethical to do gain-of-function research, that's intent. Yeah. That's premeditated. That's right. Somebody is actually using this criminal to act an unspeakable amount of terror on the U.S. and the global population. Mm-hmm. And they're using him because they know he's compromised. That's right. That's right. And he's getting away with it.